Oh, we just love the EFL Championship. And do you know what? Thank you, QPR. Thank you, Marty Fusentis, because you have made this league so interesting single-handedly by yourselves in the last couple of weeks. Not only now is the bottom three um, got teams sweating above them all the way up to Sunderland, but now the title race is blown wide open. So thank you, QPR. And I'm not wearing my QPR shirt, but I promise... I promise is a promise and I will promise that I will present the last show of the season uh, on this channel in a QPR shirt Jared, well done beating Leicester no one predicted it you bust coupons all over the country how was it for you? it was um, I want to say expected I'll be honest with you last last Monday when you asked for the score prediction I really really wanted to say 3-1 to QPR but I didn't quite have the guts to go through with it and I said I said 2-2 Um but for some reason, Saturday morning, I woke up full of confidence, had a couple of little bets with QPR in the accumulator. I think they were 15 to two. Um, so, so yeah, it was it was a brilliant win and a deserved win as well, I think. Yeah, and even our Leicester fan earlier said, do you know what? We 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 didn't beat Leeds because we didn't put a, we, we were unlucky with the chances. So we didn't beat QPR because we didn't do enough. Mm. And they said, you know, defensively you were you were sound. So okay, shout out for the defense here. Who put a shift in and who who gets man of the match for you in that? Um, I'm sure there's several contenders. I think the centre back pairing is outstanding. And I think they could probably get into quite a few teams in this league. Um, but they've been outstanding for the last 15 or so games, I'd say. Um, Jimmy Dunn's coming at right back. Three games he's played at full back, three victories. So he was outstanding. But I actually think an unsung hero at the weekend was was Isaac, Isaac Hayden um, in the middle because no one's really, really spoken about him. But he just kept everything ticking over, protected the back four, didn't lose, lose the ball. So... Um, I think I think he he has been an outstanding signing, to be honest. Um, and lots has been made of done at right back. I think there's lots of people when it was, perhaps including yourself, that when, the, when it was first decided that's where it was going to go, we might have been quite sceptical. But um, has um, has the manager proven you and lots of other fans wrong? Yeah, yeah. I think it was a really brave brave call. I think. Right back's been a problem a problem position for us for two or three years now. We bought in Reggie Cannon um I think Oct- October time and had quite high hopes, but for me he's not really formed at the level that we hoped. And then um bringing in bringing in Dunn was a really brave, brave choice to be honest with you. And um I think tactically as well is he's not just slotted it slotted in at right back when we have the ball from a goal kick, he almost put pushes up to to right wing as a longer outlet and one of the midfielders drop drops in into fullback. So it's been a lot more thought thought through than just chucking in a a centre back and right yeah. back. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, looking at the table now. Um <laughs> um you've you've managed to not only uh, jump ahead of, of Huddersfield um but also now Birmingham City are uh, or below you. Is it nice to look at that table and see that there's just a bit of traffic between you and the bottom three? Not just not many points, but there's teams there that now have to go and perform. Yeah, I think if you had looked at that league league table maybe even four weeks ago, nobody would have thought that bottom four was going to change. I don't think there's there's anybody that thought Huddersfield or us or Sheffield Wednesday would get anywhere near the other teams. And I think just having a couple more teams below us is really, really important because we've got some tough, tough fixtures coming up. So yeah, um, and you're only out of a goal difference, and who'd have thought that when we say that in December that you know your goal difference is the thing yeah. that's keeping it's keeping yeah. you out, keeping you out of the bottom bottom three. Um, yeah. All right then. Um, so this weekend, then obviously we're, we're recording this before the midweek the midweek fixtures we don't know how that's gone um, but if you could handpick any fixture to have this weekend to get three more points over I'm not being unfair to Middlesbrough fans here but it probably would be Middlesbrough uh, let's bring in Lewis who um, um, has the face of an old QPR fan um, <laughs> because um, Lewis um, Borough are in disarray and um I think I'm being kind there. Um, explain to the QPR fans watching this um, how they can 
go about beating your side this weekend? Yeah, we're an absolute mess at the moment. I mean, we're, we're, we're charitable at the moment. You know, there's there's teams, you know, Plymouth had won one out of 16 away, beat us. Stoke were an absolute free fall, beat us. Bristol City had won one in nine, beat us. So, I mean, QPR are in good form. I think they've uh, only lost one of their last nine. But yeah, at the moment, we're uh, we're giving away sloppy goals at the back. Um, we're not creating chances. Um, to be honest, uh, QBR are flying at the moment, and I can only see a win from them. I know. I, I can't wait to see the the odds on this on this one from from Skybet. But just, I mean, QPR might even be favourites, Jawed. Is that is that scare you a little bit? I don't think it's happened all season. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought. Um, yeah, these kind of games always always scare us. Um, we seemed we're quite, people call us charitable. Queens Park Rangers sometimes because when a team's in bad form, there's there's no one better to play. I do think the mentality of the club has has shifted a bit. Um, so yeah, I think we'd be fairly confident. And the game earlier in the season, Borough were one of the worst sides that we played this season already, and that was when we were not great ourselves. Um, and I think just just after they played us, they picked up form and kind of went on a bit of a run after that one. Um, so. I'm, bit surprised to see them see them struggling right now and I and I think there's four teams that have lost to us this season that have sacked their manager immediately after after losing to us so wouldn't be surprised if Carrick maybe maybe follows follows that on on Sunday morning if we win yeah I don't think there's a big call for his head yet is the Lewis but um you know you, you never know um uh, Jared, there was a couple of Leicester fans who were saying the game should be replayed because chair scored um um without going into the controversy of, of all that all that issue. How's he done since that uh, news broke? He might be spending his his next season in prison. Yeah, it's not affected his his performance at all. He, he was outstanding on on Saturday, and the defensive work that him, Willock, and Anderson did um, made such such a difference, especially especially first half. Um, okay. So yeah, he's not he's not been impacted by it at all. I see some score predictions then from you both. Um, I don't ask Lewis what he's going to go with. Um, let's start with Choward first. Um, obviously, we're recording this before Wednesday night's game. Um, I'm going to go maybe a nervy 2 1 2 1 victory. Okay. Lewis, you've been watching. Yeah, similar lines, but uh, probably less nervy. I, I haven't predicted a defeat yet, but I'm going to predict a, a 2-1 win to QBR. Um, and it'll probably be maybe a consolation goal every time we seem to play them. Elias Chair just absolutely runs rings around us. Um, he, he's always quality on the pitch. Him and Willock dovetailing on the wings. And Dykes always causes problems up top. So they're on form at the moment. And we are just, I can't see, can't see us getting anything at all. So I think another... Another three points closer to safety for QBR. Okay. Thank you both. Uh, Jared, before you go, give us your February Player of the Month for QPR. I'm guessing there's a few to choose from here. Um, February Player of the Month for QPR, I think, is Isaac Hayden. Um, his signing, I think, on and off the pitch has been huge. In the interviews that he's done, he speaks about players taking responsibility um, and he's done that on the pitch leads leads by example um and i think he's brought out the best in the midfielders around him so players like Cole back and field have definitely improved playing playing alongside him so i think okay. if we do stay up i think he'll go down as one of the best signings that we've made in a long time oh, bro. thanks jared all right good luck to you then this weekend against the borough and if you're a qpr fan hasn't yet subscribed please do so we're looking for that a thousand subscriber this weekend please let it be a qpr fan I think it's very much well deserved. Jared's put on a shift and gone through, gone to hell and back for this channel. Um, so yeah, appreciate it if you have an, uh, if you can press the subscribe button. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Lewis. We'll catch up both uh, next week. Cheers. Thank you, Mark. Cheers. Bye.